All right, blessings everyone. Okay, so let's just really get started again here. I was just finishing up about the reading of, uh, you know, how the this fable story of these twins that go into this hell of, full of bats and the connection. It's just the, the the fable of this whole thing that is, you know, Jonathan Clegg. This is their there's no real foundation to any of this. This is, you know, what God has been saying through the whole the whole book is, you know, don't be praying to stone and don't be praying to things that are that can't speak back. They don't even have a heartbeat for crying out loud, you know, where we've got Jesus, we've got, you know, he's walking, talking, breathing, and he's active in in our lives daily. I mean, this is ridiculous that you'd you'd put all of that into a stone in a in a believing of fables of gods and and goddesses. We're in the end days. There's no room for that. There's no room for that. I'm bringing this up because I need you guys to see that this is all an illusion concerning Jonathan Gleck and he is the vain show. But he's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Now, I, I'm going to just go into this and everything should be explained as we go along. I, I don't want to go too fast because, like I say, I'm going to jump over things that I should be talking about and it'll just mess things up. Believe me, I understand everybody's going to say, well, you know, you know, God is not the author of confusion. Well, I am. I'm still a work in process. So, OK, it's it's God who believes in me. Right. And he believes that I can do this. This is why I'm here. Okay, so I'm bringing this up. I'm just going to read this again, and then we'll just keep go on. Okay, so after the de uh, deliberately losing several ball matches in order to obtain a strategic advantage, the brothers, twins, were forced to take shelter in a dark house, which was filled with killer bats and with horrifying bat gods. For the Kamazotos to escape, the bats, the brothers, twins, took refuge into their blow, blow guns. But one of the twins mistakenly believed that, that Don had arrived, stuck his head out to look around, and this big bat, this Kamazo or whatever god bat, uh, promptly snapped the, the twins' head off with a razor's claw and and carried the bleeding head to the ceremonial ball court. And I think this was very important, and that's why I probably wrote it, uh, put it down here. And it says, the ceremonial ball court for use during uh, the next day's game, ball game. And here, I think it was, I put it here because again, it's got to do with the bats here with Jonathan Cleck. And Jonathan also saying that he went to a secret policeman's ball. And that's when I knew who I was. This is what he says, okay? So this is why this is in there. Um, again, the Vlad eyewear is glad, eyeglasses, sunglasses there. Again, the bats. So here we have Vlad's father, a member of the Order of the Dragon, a Sivalric, oh, sorry, brotherhood convened to fight the uh, Ottomans was known as Dracula, meaning dragon. Vlad was called Dracula, son of the dragon, or as in sometimes translated, son of the devil. So the name Vlad is primarily male name of Slavic origin that means prince. Here again, we have the vampire, uh, vampire sunglasses, the marketing video, which I'm going to be bringing up quite a bit in the next while. Again, we have Vlad sunglasses, the V, the bat, we've got it all there, okay? Here's the two hats put together again. This was done by a brother which was mirrored by two hats by pinching the X and he mirrored this here. I'm just gonna read here. For we have not followed cunning device fables when we made known unto you the power in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And this is what I've been doing, is giving testimony and saying, yes, this is how I know him. This is what I know to be true. And I'm telling you what I've seen and what I heard, and I'm sharing this with you, as we ought to do. It's got nothing to do with fables. Nothing to do with this Mayan here, this, you know, uh, Batman thing, this, these bats. Again, these are not other gods and goddesses and... Okay. Now, Jonathan Nolan has said that he believes that the girls are from Genesis 38. Well, he did this with me also at the very beginning, you know, and I went straight back to Genesis. I went back to the beginning, just as he's sending you girls right back to the beginning. No different. Okay. And with me, I was looking towards uh, this whole thing. I'm looking for answers on what was attacking me. What was the true enemy? Why did this enemy hate me so much that it wanted to kill and, and just torture me? Okay, so I wanted to know this, right? So I'm looking towards Jonathan Clegg and to, for answers. You know, I'm just seeking. And he's saying some things that I really know to be true. And I'm like, okay, you know, so I, I'm very familiar with him. Okay, I'm very, it's very familiar. Okay, and so there's the, the, the pull, you know, but I couldn't receive them and I couldn't understand why I couldn't receive them. So, okay, and I've been wrong many times before. So, I mean, I'm just still, you know, on the fence about Jonathan Nolan, at, or not Jonathan Nolan, but Jonathan Clegg. So then Jonathan Nolan was known as jo Jacoyas Nine at the time for me. And I was, like I say, seeking. I wanted to know the, the enemy, like why I was attacked. Like how is it that these clawed green things knew me? Why were, you know, my whole family, my brother is even involved with this, you know? And these were something, this was something I needed to know because I was looking at, and I hate to say this, but I was looking at something that had claws and was green. It was a dark color. And so what was I looking for, you know, but I was looking and that's when Jonathan Nolan, one day, what was happening here as like, again, like I say, I knew him as John uh, Jacoyas nine. I liked the name. So I opened up the door, went in and I heard him and he was just going crazy. <laughs> like he was just, you know, the spirit was just moving him so quickly, you know, and it was like, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Oh, I, I remember doing that, you know. So it was very, very familiar with me. And I heard, you know, the singing was very loud to me. And uh, so what was he talking about? He was talking about Cain. <laughs> now, John Jacoyas Nine didn't know who I was, right? So, but anyway, this is the first time I'm hearing him and he's talking about Cain and all of this, you know, in the spirit and all right, <laughs> straight back to Genesis, <laughs> right? So I'm already realizing that because when I asked Jesus, I said like, you know, where did this all come from? Because I was now put down and I was, I was starting to heal and it was all about incest and it was sex. Everything that re revolved around me was about sex. So the first thing that comes to, you know, what I hear is the garden. And I knew instinctively at this point that this apple was a fable and that it, it really represented sex. And the answer came to me about who Cain's wife would be. You know, and at the at first it's like, well, there was not supposed to be anybody else but them, you know, so it would have to be incest. 
and this is a girl that never picked up the Bible, didn't, you know, like, I was just, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> okay, answer, solved, Pro you know, done. Okay, so now I'm, I'm looking at this, at my attacks, and they're, you know, the claw, it's green, you know, and these grays. So this is where I'm going. And this is where Jonathan Nolan, again, led me back to Cain. And this is where I'm still at, okay? The lineage of Cain. Yeah, but that is going to be another time. Right now, I can't do that. I just want to say to you that he brought me back to Genesis, and he was not wrong. He was not wrong. He did not do wrong by me. And I believe what he's doing right here, right now, and in the way and what he is showing you is what I believe to be true. And I stand by him with this, but I'm not going to go there. And you know, I, to me, it's not about um, the prophets right now. Let's just hear the truth. We need to hear and get used to the, the sound of truth. Okay, and we need to pick the, pick this truth up, investigate it. We're supposed to do everything to it. I mean, we're supposed to really uh, discern the spirits. Okay, well then let's do it. But we don't need to be insulted because it's happening. It's just that we need to start concerning ourselves with what is happening because what we are saying is now being manifested. And I much prefer talk about Jesus and the testimonies and what he's done in my life than to constantly, you know, be where Jonathan Cleck is going, okay? I, you know, I don't even watch his videos, you know. A lot of the times his videos have come to me. So, but again, that's a whole nother, another video, okay? So, here... I think there's a lot more evidence that what Jonathan Nolan has said is very, very true. And it needs to be pondered and conversation, you know, and it would be a good conversation. No, <laughs> I think so. It's better than talking about these bats and, and going to hell in, in, in my Aztec calendar here. Okay. I would much rather be talking about Genesis 38 and the lessons that were learned because really what's being said in there is amazing to me from what I've just found because I, I picked it up. I, I looked at it and this is what my findings were concerning Genesis 38 and the girls. And it connected with me because I went right straight to Genesis 3.15 where I was supposed to be. Okay, so now in one of my video, recent videos, past videos, I was talking about witchcraft. And all of a sudden, bang, 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 everything's happening, of course, because it's manifesting. Everything we say is now manifested. And I know that when Jesus says that we're going to learn how to, to raise them up, we're going to learn how to talk all over again here. Okay, so here... I'm just going to um, show you a few things. Again, I have the authority to bring this forward. It's going to be sensitive. I am not accusing anybody of anything. I am only um, being a voice, okay? And it's a voice of understanding. And it's about discernment, okay? And this is a good, this is a really good video to, to, to exercise that. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to read this out now again, where I was talking about witchcraft and I don't know, um, but this is what happened. I'm just going to be reading this out. Okay. So Karen, instead of going back and forth to my other bit, you know, to the video, I just wrote it all out here. Um, if you want to go and see it again, you go right ahead. I'm just got a lot here and I, okay. Call it lazy. I don't care. Okay, so now Karen, you did you said this March twenty seventh, uh, two twenty three, and this was about the, around the same time Jonathan Nolan was talking about the signet, 
Okay, so here I remembered you talking about the ring. This is a signet, all right? This would be classified as a signet. So I'm just going to read this out, okay? Just for clarity and understanding, I never kept one thing Clack gave me. I gave away the cap, the clothes, the coffee mugs, the key, the wedding ring, the shofar, the computer, all equipment, gemstones, beanie caps, probably there was more. I never kept anything for any length of time that he purposely gave me. Instinctively, see that word, instinctively, right? Instinctively, I rejected it all, including direct PayPal funds. As a matter of fact, today I happened to cross a stone he had given Jim that I had forgotten about and gave that away to a neighbor that was admiring it. Now, here is um, where Karen is sharing with me about this incident, about this ring, okay? Okay, so here, um, this is Karen, all right? So she's talking about this wedding ring. This was so crazy. Out of the blue, outside the back door of my gathering room in the plain sight, this was laying on the dirt. I was sure someone had dropped it. Nobody had even seen it before. It's a wedding ring. Took me day to, to process the, the whole event. After a couple of months, I went to Johnny's with Jim and, and delivered him the ring. I figured since he was the chief watchman, I'm an idiot, I took pictures of where I laid the ring for Johnny to find. He started wearing that ring in many videos. The testimony is a whole lot bigger, but you get the jest. The Lord has done some over-the-top staggering stuff. Okay, so here we have the ring she's talking about. I've seen this on him a few times. I'm going to see a few videos, I mean. Just making sure you can see that. Okay. This is where she put it and laid it on the book where he does his whatever stuff. This is the ring. Here she finishes and says, I found the band at my place in Beach City. I asked everyone if they dropped the ring. Nobody had ever seen it. Jonathan was at his house when this happened. It was He was told about it. I felt led to deliver him the ring. I only asked Corey the best way to do that. Corey said for me to not tell him and just leave it. That is what I did on the books where he casts lots often. Johnny knew about the ring and knew I had it. So after I just left the ring on the books, he found it after we went home. He was wearing it on his pinky finger in a number of videos. I think he talked about it, but I, I can't be sure. I think he did too. I, you know, I think he did. So it's gold, it's silver, okay? Do you now, I just want to say, do you think that Jonathan Kleck knows who the girls are in the body of Christ? Okay, that's my question to you. Because you see, there's a, it's ongoing here where Jonathan Kleck won't even acknowledge Karen or, you know, he knew of the ring, right? 
He knew of it, but he didn't acknowledge. Karen. And this is the same thing that Judah did with Tamra. But Judah acknowledged them. Whereas he Cleck is doing the opposite and not acknowledging Karen. And this is a ring. This is a signet that is being handed directly to him with the name Jesus on it. Okay, let me continue. Okay. What happened there? I hope you can see all this. Okay. So let me describe this a little bit into a little more detail about Judah. Okay. And Tamra, the daughter-in-law. Desperate for a child, frustrated with Judah's lack of concern as the patriarch of his own clan, she dressed as a harlot in another town, lay with her unsuspecting father-in-law, became pregnant, and had some of his personal items to prove who the father was. When word reached Judah that his daughter-in-law is pregnant, knowing that he his own sons did not make this happen, he called for her to be brought out and killed. It was then she revealed what the who the father was, and it was Judah himself. And Judah is also just as guilty as the as the sons because he promised the youngest son to her and this did not happen. So you can see the mix and the mingling here that is going on and is embedded in God's people. They did not go forward and do what was right for God and didn't have the fear of God before them. So Judah acknowledged them and said she had been more righteous than I. Let me continue. I'm so excited about this. It was extremely important in concept in Judaism as well as other surrounding nations. It was part of God's instruction given to Moses. But truth be told, what we found is that God would const uh, continually work against the grain of the firstborn law. He went against the grain when he chose Abel instead of Cain. He did it again when Jacob received the blessing instead of Esau. Here in Genesis 38, the younger twin, Peretz, would continue the Messianic line in Matthew 1 is explained here. Okay, so here, one of the twins, which is Perez, okay, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to sp pronounce the names, but here, a bloodline directed right at Jesus. Masonic, Masonic line. Later in Genesis, Joseph would reign over his family and became his older brother's only hope. Later in scripture, David would be chosen as king over all the older siblings. In the grand scheme of redemption, Israel, the firstborn, was rejected, would reject the Messiah, which would pave the way for the Gentiles to be adopted in God's family. In less than ideal circumstances, God used flawed human choices to produce the glory of Jesus Christ. And yes, Jesus was a firstborn of all creation. Who is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So again, like I say, here Judah acknowledged them and Jonathan Cleck would not acknowledge Karen at all. Okay, so here, this is again from Karen. Just recently, this was uh, April 14th. Okay. 
praise the Lord, I'm starting to have my way, my way, uh, starting to have way more clarity. Sorry about that. Just watched your video. Keep going, sis. I see everything clearly that you are saying. I know there is more to come. Okay. I respond. Thank you, my sister, for your blessing. I know you haven't let... For Okay. Thank you, my sister, for your blessing. To know you haven't let me go completely. You're absolutely right when you say, I listen to Jesus. He is my decision. He's in my decision making always. Son of man, eat the bread with quaking and drink the water with trembling and with carefulness. I, I do understand and relate to triggers and appreciate your matter with Nolan to please remember, sis, to breathe. I'm so freaking excited to share with you my findings concerning you and Kathy. Genesis 38, no really well, here will be more clarity, my sister, here we find ourselves in the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Karen responds, I would like to explain regarding my triggers, but not sure how well I can. This is a spiritual thing more than a flesh trigger. No doubt I have flesh triggers as well could easily be explained as a flesh trigger. I just have to say, the Lord expressed me, expressed, Lord expressed me to stick to my task and not get distracted. Oh, sorry, okay. Nolan and, and his impossible rants and claim, claims were a huge distraction. Okay, I'm not gonna, so that it was, is what? Okay, I gotta read it all, all right. Nolan and his impossible rants and, cl and claims were a huge distraction, not to mention Mike Giver in that mix. So that is what I have done, stuck to my task. I am led to stand and keep speaking because I'm alive, not de declining like Kleck proclaimed the Lord said, and obviously not dead either. But plot best platform I have to do that is on Jane's channel daily. I would love to be just done with it. Frankly, my brain is done with Cleck and his idiotic odyssey. My spirit is keeping me steady talking. Hmm. Cleck is a prophet of Baal. I'm treating him as such. I'm not a heckler. I don't talk down to people. I just, I'm just me. But in this case, Lord, the Lord is asking me to stand like I've never had before. Yikes. So I'm doing it. Kleck's spells are becoming clearer to me. His, con his constant manifesting into the system, he's con his constant manifesting into the system. It's all spell work. It always has been. I just couldn't see it. I thank the Lord for that, or I would have bailed on Cleck a long time ago and failed in my purpose. My gosh, I'm just astonished at it all. I know that there is more. The hand mirror I saw and kept seeing it burning in my mind. I knew every word Cleck was saying was reflected back to him. I even told Susan Harless and Alicia Howard about it. It's one of the only things that snapped me out of the spell, confused the heck out of my brainwashing mind, but I hung on to it. The plumb line, I can't even express the overwhelming need to drop that. I could not have refused that direction no matter what. I felt sure I would endure Kleck's wrath over it. I didn't care, had to be done. He never said a word. Again, staying very clear from Karen. I have no clarity over any action. I was another action. I was led to accomplish it, and maybe I never will have it. I took a gold. I took a gold wedding ring, and the and the key, Cleck gave me respect. Respect. Uh, 
representing, I'm sorry, representing the key to the kingdom. Sorry about that. Strung it on a, a leather cord and hung it in the eave of the ark building. It's still there as far as I know. I wanted nothing more to do with it. Actually, I had Corey hang it since I was too uh, sh short to do it. So Cleck is fully aware it happened. Again, Cleck never said a word. That was done prior to the night under the stars. Just odd things. I'm trusting the Lord led me as Cleck was preparing to sacrifice me. The ceremonial bath in the ark building in the bathroom decor with the peacocks and the hourglass. Yep, big deal. I was prepared prior to the action. I guess I was a target all along and was too naive to understand it. I also have listened to the Lord. My goodness, the Lord healed me when I stepped out on my faith to the Lord. He responded every day for the longest for the longest my prayer was increase my faith. Cleck was just not a part of any spiritual aspect of any of that. It's just like a, like complicated for me to explain lol anyway let's keep walking and see what father has for us to complete he never fails us always is with us we just keep walking in faith toward him no matter what amen thank you karen okay so here if you heard there's a few things in there that was very sensitive and it's not something that should be ignored. Because I too believe that she was and still is, well, according to him anyway, a sacrifice. Because you know why? She's still here. She's still talking about it. And I believe she's a thorn in Jonathan Clegg's side. because she's still here. Okay, so again, I'm just, I've come back here for a moment. Um, again, it's, I just wanna read this out. Now here, I'm just going to reread this. I found the band at my place in the beach city. I asked everyone if they dropped the ring. Nobody had, nobody had ever seen it. Jonathan was at home when this happened. It was, it was talked about. I felt led to deliver him the ring. I only asked Corey the best way to do that. Corey said for me to not tell him and just leave it. That's what I did on the book where he's cast the lots. Again, here we have Jonathan's hands are not dirty. They're not, she, she's not being acknowledged. Um, you can say that, you know, this is what Corey said. This had nothing to, but he did not acknowledge her. When she, when she put the ring on this leather, band and, and hung it up it was still there was no there was no response to that that ring so there's definitely something happening here and again i see where judah acknowledged tamra where jonathan cleck is not acknowledging karen and this ring you know with jesus's name on it even knowing that one of the twins was in the, 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 the bloodline of Jesus on record. True repentance, the ability to change one's mind or purpose, discern one's purpose. Discern, I pray thee, whose are these? The signet, the bracelet, and the staff. And this is how Judah knew that she was telling the truth and that she was carrying the bloodline. Okay, 
Okay, and I want to talk about this peacock fable thing, okay? This peacock thing. All right. In Egypt, the bird was linked to the p uh, to the uh, in Egypt, the bird was linked to the worship of the sun god Amon Ra, whatever Amon Ra, and associated with the all-seeing eye of Horus. In many of these cultures, the peacock is seen as the earthly manifestation of the phoenix. And what's this all about here that he's all excited about? The peacock. I really would suggest that you look into the symbology of the peacock concerning Egypt. And what's this thing going on here with, uh, what's his name, Travis Scott? Okay, now Travis Scott is uh, now Batman. And there's more to that, which I'll be getting into. But I couldn't, when I saw this with uh, Travis Scott, with the building and all of this crack jack or jack crack, whatever, cactus jack. Um, when I saw this, the first thing I thought of was the building that Jonathan Kleck was, looked at as, when he came out the alley. And this is the church right here. And I just found out that it was called Travis Park Church. Yeah, Travis Park Church. Really? And here, you know, off to the side, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but it looks like a shape of a coffin here. This thing here, right? There's the cross right here. This looks like a nail that's going straight through the coffin. Here's a coffin right here. This is... The same building right there. Same building. And then here, you know, it was it was such an eye-opener for me because I'm looking into Genesis 38 and I'm putting things together and I've still got things to say about it, but I don't have enough time. I don't have enough space. But here I, I was reading this and it said 38. 38, okay, I'm thinking Genesis. First thing that comes to my mind is Genesis 38, Peacock Avenue, stop moving. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> yeah, 38, Peacock Avenue, stop moving. Yeah. So again, here's Travis Scott. It is is connected, and I am connecting Travis Scott along uh, right beside uh, Jonathan Cleck. 